In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this lion coin purse. And for this project, you'll need an 8.5 centimeter purse clasp, some gold, white, and brown yarn, a safety nose, two safety eyes, a little bit of stuffing, and a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. For the back of the purse, we're going to begin with a magic circle using our gold yarn. So wrap the yarn around your fingers, reach through, bring up your loop, chain one to secure your yarn. And now for round one, we're going to do six single crochet into that magic circle. And there's three, four, five, and six. And now you'll grab that tail, give it a pull, place your stitch marker, and at this point you should have six stitches. For round two, we're going to do one increase in each stitch all the way around. And so for an increase, you're going to go into the stitch, do one single crochet, Go back into that same stitch for another single crochet. And that's one increase right there. And so now you'll continue to do one increase in each stitch. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 12 stitches. For round three, we'll do a repeating sequence of one single crochet followed by one increase. And now you'll continue to repeat one single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 18 stitches. For round four, we'll do a repeating sequence of two single crochet, followed by one increase. And now you'll continue to repeat two single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 24 stitches. For round five, we're going to do a repeating sequence of three single crochet, followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat three single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 30 stitches. For round six, we'll do a repeating sequence of four single crochet, followed by one increase. There's one, two, three, four, and then one increase. And you'll continue to repeat four single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round seven, our repeating sequence will be five single crochet followed by one increase. So there's three, four, five, and then one increase. And now you'll continue to repeat five single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 42 stitches. For round eight, we're going to do a repeating sequence of six single crochet, followed by one increase. There's three, four, five, and six. And now one increase. And you'll continue to repeat six single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 48 stitches. For round nine, we'll do a repeating sequence of seven single crochet followed by one increase. There's three, four, five, 
six and seven. And now one increase. And you'll continue to repeat seven single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 54 stitches. For round 10, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And when you come to the end of this round, you should still have a total of 54 stitches. And here I've come to the end of round 10. At this point, we're going to remove that stitch marker, do a slip stitch into the next stitch, and tie off. Now you'll cut your yarn, and then weave in those two ends. For the front of the purse, we'll continue with our gold yarn and begin with a magic circle. Chain one to secure your yarn. And for round one, we'll do six single crochet into that magic circle. There's three, four, five, and six. And then pull the tail and place your stitch marker. And at this point, you should have six stitches. For round two, we're going to do one increase in each stitch all the way around. And when you come to the end of this round, you should have a total of 12 stitches. For round three, our repeating sequence will be one single crochet followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat one single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 18 stitches. For round two, we're going to do a repeating sequence of two single crochet, followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat two single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 24 stitches. For round five, we'll do a repeating sequence of three single crochet, followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat three single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have 30 stitches. For round six, we'll do a repeating sequence of four single crochet, followed by one increase. One, two, three, four, and then the increase. And now you'll continue to repeat four single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round seven, our repeating sequence will be five single crochet, followed by one increase. There's three, four, five, and then one increase. And you'll continue to repeat five single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 42 stitches. For round eight, we'll do a repeating sequence of six single crochet, followed by one increase. There's three, four, six, and then one increase. And you'll continue to repeat six single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 48 stitches. For round nine, we'll do a repeating sequence of seven single crochet, followed by one increase. There's two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, and then one increase. And you'll continue to repeat seven single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 54 stitches. For rounds 10 and 11, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And when you come to the end of round 11, you should still have 54 stitches. And it will also be a good time to weave in that beginning tail and cut off the excess yarn. For round 12, we're going to do one single crochet in the back loops only. So instead of coming through the stitch and going under both of those loops, you're gonna take your hook and bring it in through the top and only catch that loop in the back. And so we're going to just do one single crochet in each of the back loops only. And when you come to the end of this round, you should still have 54 stitches. For round 13, we'll be going through the full stitch again, and you'll do a repeating sequence of seven single crochet, followed by one decrease. There's three, four, five, six, seven, and now for the decrease, so go into the stitch, bring up your loop, go to the next stitch, bring up a loop, grab the yarn, and pull through all three of those loops, and that is a decrease, and now you'll continue to repeat seven single crochet and one decrease, and at the end of this round, you should have a total of 48 stitches. For round 14, our repeating sequence will be six single crochet, followed by one decrease. There's two, three, four, five, and six, and now one decrease. And you'll continue to repeat six single crochet and one decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have 42 stitches. For round 15, we'll do a repeating sequence of five single crochet followed by one decrease. There's two, three, four, five, and then one decrease. And you'll continue to repeat five single crochet and one decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 36 stitches. For round 16, our repeating sequence will be four single crochet followed by one decrease. There's two, three, four, and then one decrease. And you'll continue to repeat four single crochet and one decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 30 stitches. For round 17, we'll do a repeating sequence of three single crochet, followed by one decrease. And you'll continue to repeat three single crochet and one decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 24 stitches. For round 18, we'll do a repeating sequence of two single crochet, followed by one decrease. And you'll continue to repeat two single crochet and one decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 18 stitches. And here I've come to the end of round 18. And before moving on, you'll need to add your stuffing. But you wanna make sure that you're not adding too much. We want it just enough to where it's a little bit poofy, but not a complete ball. 
So just enough to kind of give it about a donut shape kind of thickness. For round 19, we're gonna do a repeating sequence of one single crochet, followed by one decrease. And you'll continue to repeat one single crochet and one decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have 12 stitches. For round 20, we'll remove the stitch marker and we're going to just be continuously decreasing until this hole is closed. And I've already started that process. So I've just got a couple more to do here. And then once you get to the point where it's a little hard to do an actual decrease, you'll take your uh, hook and just go straight across that opening and do a slip stitch. Come under this next stitch for another slip stitch and then tie off. And now you cut your yarn and weave in this end, making sure that the stuffing is kind of flattened out. And so now I'll just uh, thread the yarn needle. And to flatten out this little bump here, I'm just going to go under a stitch and then come through those stitches from the decreases. And this will help to flatten this out a bit. Pulling nice and tight. And then I'm just going to take my yarn needle under one of the stitches. And before pulling the yarn all the way through, take the yarn needle through that loop and then give it a pull. Now we're just gonna run that yarn needle through the front of the purse and cut off the excess yarn and that hides the tail. And so now the front of the purse is done. Once you have the front and the back part of the purse made, we're going to join them together. And so we're gonna come in here, these loops that were left behind unworked, we're going to attach our yarn to one of those loops, place the stitch marker, oopsie, and then we're going to do one single crochet in each of those unused loops. And this will be round one of joining the front and the back. So just one single crochet in each of those unused loops on the front part of the purse all the way around. And once you've made it all the way around, you should still have 54 stitches. For round two of joining the front and back, we're now going to grab the back of the purse and we're going to be working through the stitches on this side and on this side. So take your hook, go through that first stitch and then find one of the stitches in the back of the purse. And we're going to be doing 27 single crochet. So there's one. Making sure to go through the stitches on both sides. Two. Three. four, five, and you'll continue to do your single crochets until you have a total of 27, and then you will stop and I will meet you after I do the 27 stitches. And here I've done my 27 stitches, 
We're not going to finish going all the way around because this part becomes the opening of the purse. And now we're going to take that stitch marker and we're going to move it. So we're moving the stitch marker and this will become the new beginning of your rounds moving forward. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch working all the way around the opening of our purse. So one single crochet in each stitch. And so you'll have 27 stitches going across the front of the purse. And then you're going to jump over, over here and do another 27 stitches going across the back of the purse. And once you get all the way back to where you started, you should end up with a total of 54 stitches going around the opening of the purse. So I'm gonna to continue to make my stitches and I'll meet you at the end of this round. And here I've worked my way all the way around. So I went all along this side, moved over to this side, worked all the way around. And I have 54 stitches. I've moved my stitch marker, and now we're going to continue on with round four and do one single crochet in each stitch, working all the way around the opening of the purse. So once again, we're gonna work all the way across here, come over here, work all the way across the back, and once you get back to your stitch marker, you should still have 54 stitches. And here I've come to the end of round four. So now I'm gonna remove my stitch marker and then just do a slip stitch into this next stitch. And I'm actually gonna do one more slip stitch into the next one and then tie off. And now you cut your yarn and weave in your ends. So there is the front and the back of the purse have been attached. Once you have the front and the back of the purse done, you'll be ready to attach your purse clasp. This one is an 8.5 centimeter purse clasp and I've threaded with just some regular thread I've threaded my needle. This one's curved just to make it easier for me to do my sewing, but you can use a straight one if you need to, or if that's all you have. And so I've attached my thread to the purse, and I've already gone ahead and did the first stitch here, and I go through that a couple of times just to make sure it's completely secure. And so now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come through and bring it around to the front, making sure not to catch it on anything. So I've gone through the stitch with my needle, and now I'm gonna bring that needle up through this hole. And pull it through. And then I'm gonna move to the next one. So each of these stitches goes through a hole that you used on the last stitch, and then you'll move to the next one and poke your needle through that hole, making sure you're going through the stitches of the yarn and pull it through. And you're gonna continue to do this, working your way all the way around so I'm going to come through one of these stitches and then up through the hole in the purse clasp. And then just continue to work your way all the way around. You want to make sure you get this center lined up. Whoops. Get the center lined up with the center of the purse clasp 
as you go through and making sure that you're catching the stitches made with the yarn as you're doing this to keep it completely secure. And here I have finished sewing the clasp onto the purse. You can use a more neutral color for your thread if you have some, but the white is what I have. And it opens and closes without getting caught on the stitches. And now we're ready to move on to creating the face of the lion. For the muzzle, we will begin with the white yarn and we'll start with a magic circle. Chain one to secure your yarn. And then for round one, we're going to do six single crochet into that magic circle. There's three, four, five, and six. And then pull that tail, close up the hole. Place your stitch marker, and at this point, you should have six stitches. For round two, we're going to do one increase in each stitch all the way around. And when you come to the end of this round, you should have a total of 12 stitches. For round three, we'll do a repeating sequence of one single crochet followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat one single crochet and one increase, and at the end of this round, you should have 18 stitches. For round four, we'll do a repeating sequence of two single crochet, followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat two single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have 24 stitches. For round five, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And at the end of this round, you should still have 24 stitches. And it will also be a good time to weave in that beginning tail and cut off the excess yarn. And here I've come to the end of round five. And before moving on to the next round, I'm going to redo this final stitch so I can uh, change colors. So we're gonna go into that stitch, bring up the loop, grab the gold yarn, and finish the stitch with the gold yarn. So pulling it through both of those. And then just move that stitch marker and we're ready to move on to the next round. For rounds six and seven, using our gold yarn, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And when you come to the end of round seven, you should still have a total of 24 stitches. And here I've come to the end of round seven. I'm going to remove that stitch marker, slip stitch into the next stitch, and then tie off. And when you cut your yarn, well first we're going to go ahead and cut off that white yarn. And you can weave in those ends. And then when you cut your working yarn, you want to make sure you leave a long enough tail for sewing it onto the front of the purse. Once you have finished the muzzle, it'll be time to attach the safety nose. And so we're going to place it between rounds four and five and just poke it through one of those stitches. And take the backing, place it on the post, and press down. And this is just an old stylus that I took the tip off of and it works pretty good. So you want to make sure that you get the backing all the way down so it's not popping back off. And there we go, the nose is attached. 
When you're ready to attach the muzzle to the front of the purse, you'll thread your yarn needle. And the front of the purse is the part that kind of poofs out. And we're going to add some stuffing so it holds its shape. And you want to place it to where there's still room for the eyes and making sure that it is centered with the clasp. And then all we're going to do is take the yarn needle under a stitch in the purse and then up through a stitch in the muzzle. Under a stitch in the purse and up through a stitch in the muzzle. And then you'll just continue to do this all the way around until you get back to where you started. And here I've worked my way all the way around. I went ahead and added a little more stuffing. And now I'm just gonna go under this final stitch and up through the muzzle. And come back through one of those stitches and tie off. So to tie off, you just go under a stitch and before pulling the yarn all the way through, take the yarn needle through that loop and give it a pull. Now we're just gonna run that yarn needle through making sure that it didn't poke all the way through and then cut off the excess yarn and that will hide the tail and the muzzle is now attached. To add the mouth, we're going to cut a strip of black yarn, thread the yarn needle with one end, make a slip knot on the other, and then we're just going to be following the line that was created by some of these rows. You'll take your yarn needle under a stitch, and when you reach the loop that you made with the slip knot, put your yarn needle in there, pull it nice and tight, and then pull the yarn the rest of the way through. And we'll weave in this end after we're done. So now we're going to go back through the stitch that we came out of and come out the next one. And before pulling it all the way through, take your yarn needle through that loop and then pull tight and repeat. So moving to the same one we just came out of, and go to the next one through the loop and give it a pull. And you'll continue to do this until your smile is how you want it to be. I'm only going to do a half smile on this one, but you can continue and do a full smile. And so to tie off, I'm gonna to move to the next stitch and come out and then through the loop, pull tight to make my knot and then run that yarn needle through, making sure that I didn't actually go into the purse. And then we'll do the same thing with this side, hiding the tail. And then you'll cut off the excess yarn. And if you pull a little bit tight when you do that, the end of the yarn will pop back inside the purse. And then we can pop this back out. And there we go. We have added a little smile to the muzzle. For the eyes, we'll use the gold yarn. Make a magic circle. Chain one to secure your yarn. And for round one, we're going to do six single crochet into that magic circle. It's one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
back of the tail, give it a pull. Um, for this, you don't want to pull too, too tight because we're going to be putting the safety eye through that center. And now we're just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we did and tie off. And leave a long enough tail for sewing. And next we will attach the safety eye. Before attaching your safety eye, go ahead and weave in that beginning tail. And now we'll take this tiny little safety eye, poke it right through the center of the circle that we did, and then pop the backing on. Making sure you get it all the way on there so it stays in place. And now we're ready to sew this onto the purse, and you'll also need to make one more of these. When you're ready to attach your eyes to the front of the purse, we're just going to kind of look at it. I've already got one attached. I'm about one, two rows, well, in between the second and third row from the top of the muzzle. And I'll just poke the post into one of those stitches. And once you have it in the place that you want, just go under a stitch in the purse and then up through a stitch in the eye. And then under a stitch in the purse. And up through a stitch in the eye. And you'll continue to do this all the way around until you get back to where you started. And here I've worked my way all the way around. And so now I'm just going to come under one of these stitches in the purse, pull nice and tight before tying off, make sure you've got them placed where you want them. And now we'll just tie off just like with the other stuff. Go under a stitch in the purse. And before pulling it all the way through, take that yarn needle through that loop and give it a pull. And then hide the tail inside the front of the purse and snip off the excess yarn. And there we go. We have attached the eyes. For the ears, we'll start with a magic circle using the gold yarn. Chain one to secure your yarn. And then for round one, we'll do six single crochet into that magic circle. Four, five, and six. And give that tail a pull. And place your stitch marker. For round two, we'll do one increase in each stitch all the way around. And at the end of this round, you should end up with 12 stitches. For round three, we'll do a repeating sequence of one single crochet, followed by one increase. And you'll continue to repeat one single crochet and one increase. And at the end of this round, you should have a total of 18 stitches. For round four, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And when you come to the end of this round, you should still have 18 stitches. And it's also a good time to go ahead and weave in that beginning tail and cut off the excess yarn. For round five, we're going to do a repeating sequence of one single crochet, followed by one decrease. 
and you'll continue to repeat one single crochet and one decrease and at the end of this round you should have 12 stitches. And here I've come to the end of round five. And now we're going to remove that stitch marker and to finish the ear, we're going to take the ear and fold it flat. Take your crochet hook and you're going to go through the stitches on both sides of that fold and do a single crochet. And you're going to do this going all the way across. So making sure you're going through the stitches on both sides keeping them lined up so it stays nice and even. And then when you get to that final stitch, you'll just do one slip stitch and tie off. And then you'll cut your yarn. Make sure you leave a long enough tail for sewing. And you will need to make two of these. Once both of your ears are finished, you can attach them to the purse. And I moved this one. The ears are going to be about two rows away from the edge of the purse clasp. And so you'll just kind of decide where you want them to be. And you'll go under a stitch in the purse and up through a stitch in the ear. Trying not to get it caught on the other ear. And then you'll just follow that line all the way across. And so under a stitch in the purse, through a stitch in the ear. And under a stitch in the purse, through a stitch in the ear. And I've just got a couple more stitches here. So continuing to work all the way across. And then I like to make sure it's holding its shape. And I like to catch that one stitch that's on the very edge before tying off. So now I'll just go through a couple of those stitches before tying off. So under a stitch, yarn needle through the loop and pull tight. And then we'll hide that tail inside the front of the purse and cut off the excess yarn. And now we have our ears attached. And if you want, you could do this in another color or leave it like this. And it's, this is how my bear pattern is right here. And to turn it into a lion, we're just gonna add the mane in just a moment. When you're ready to attach the mane, we're going to cut a bunch of strips of yarn. And these, for me, they wrap around my hand, but I do have small hands, so you just kind of have to eyeball it. We're going to break these up into groups of two, fold it in half, thread the folded end through the yarn needle, and then you're going to take your needle and go under a stitch, pull just the folded end through, and then take those loose ends and bring it through that loop and then pull tight. And so you'll continue to do this all the way around. So fold it in half, thread the yarn needle, Move to the next stitch, part way through, and the ends through the loop and pull tight. And then once you have all these groups of yarn attached, you'll trim it down to the length you want. 
So you'll continue to do this all the way around, making sure to frame the face and under the muzzle. And here I have finished adding all the bits of yarn for the mane. Now I only did it on the front part of the purse. If you want, you can go around and do it on the back. And my little coin purse is done. It opens and closes. And there we go. There is the lion coin purse.